Hello? 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 Across lockdown, I kept a list of all the films and shows I watched. Now that lockdown seems non-existent, today I'm gonna go through my list. I'm gonna do one of those jump cuts sort of videos stating the title and then talking briefly about that. So here we go. My first one is Noughts and Crosses. So this is the most recent adaptation by the BBC and as someone that's loved Noughts and Crosses for years, I think it's one of the best adaptations I have seen thus far. I could talk about the story for hours, but the cast, the culture that was embedded into everything, it was so well done and I recommend, even more so with everything that's going on right now. Spooks, series one, two, three, and four, and I skipped to the last series. Quiz, the who wants to be a millionaire drama. So it was about the general and his wife who tried to cheat on the Who Wants to Be a Millionaire program at the start of the noughties. It was slightly dramatised, and I did actually watch the second episode before the first, and I didn't realise, and there were points and fashion choices that didn't feel like it was set in the period it was meant to be. Apart from that, The US Office, all series. I love it, I love it, I love it. If you didn't know, I made a video years ago about my love for The Office. Check it out. Doctor Who. I've watched the entirety of Doctor Who, but I went back, I watched some of David Tennant's, then I skipped to Capaldi. I was still a tween teen in the Tennant era, maybe I connect to that more, but I definitely didn't connect to Capaldi and I tried again. Then I went back to the Smith era. Matt, I love him, but some of the stories just... Uh... The Tudors, the whole way through. The intro is highly Americanized, but I love it. The music is so rich and has so much depth. And I remember being a teenager and getting hold of that and uh, listening to that soundtrack when I was doing my mock GCSEs and especially when I was painting this. So when I see that painting, I often think about the music from the Tudors. Downton Abbey. Oh my goodness, it went on and on and on. But the story of Anna and Mr. Bates. The first series, okay. But gradually as time went on, I got more and more frustrated, especially when Catherine of Aragon turned up, the actress from the Tudors. There are pros, cons, loved Maggie, got irritated when the Beast decided to disappear. There's so many things I admire about that show. I mean, I love period dramas, but I was more than happy when it had finished. Next one, Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice? No, no, no. I hated it from start to finish, but I wanted to watch it because I love some of the music from the Broadway musical. I am a fan of musicals. It's not something I really talk about, but I am. I just wanted to see the source material and I don't want to watch it again. From what I have heard on the soundtrack, the show is a lot better. Gentleman Jack. I love it. I am trying to read the book. The music was so upbeat considering everything that was happening. The subject matter, it pulled so many heartstrings and the actress herself is just spot on. Again, a period drama. Mmm. Heroes. First series, fantastic. Second series, it's all right. Third series, what? Fourth series, that is exceptionally dated, but it works. It works within the time frame it's set in. Don't watch beyond the first series. Leave it at that. Do not hurt yourself. Stop. I love that track so much. The emotion behind that as well. The film Hot Fuzz. We watched this as movie night, my whole family in the lounge at home and me here on WhatsApp. It was funny in places and then it went on far too long. It was a bit like the At World's End, the third film they did in the Cornetto series. The Martian. This film is perfection. I think I should just put loves the music here. In the last few minutes of the film, you're like, I feel like one of those people standing in Times Square looking up and seeing what's happening and just praying that it will all work out. My love for that film is just, yeah, I just, I just love it, love it, love. About three weeks into lockdown, I had a movie night with James and we watched The Grand Budapest Hotel. A few episodes of Buffy. So my friend Sarah loves this and she recommended several episodes for me to watch and they were good episodes, but as a show, as a series going through it consecutively, I didn't connect with it. Some of it is just so cringy, but that was the norm back then. I went back and one of the episodes I had on yesterday was where Amy, in her other form, is putting the dolls in the cauldron and it's supposed to be really scary. And I'm just sitting there going, okay, cool. 
but I know there's so many good stories in that show. You just gotta pick them out. First Night. Now I love this film, despite the fact that lots of people consider it to be fairly problematic or very traditional, but for the time period I guess it's set in, it works. I remember as a kid watching it and being in admiration of Arthur. I wanted to be Guinevere, I wanted to be rescued. People will disagree, but I do feel as though we can still be independent, strong women, while simultaneously still wanting someone to come along and change our world, like Sean Connery. Even as a kid, I hated Lancelot. Lancelot ruins everything. Well, technically it's them together, but you know what I mean, if he wasn't there in the first place, then actually she'd probably be dead at the hands of Maligant. Actually, forget that. <laughs> Despite all its faults in modern day times, I suppose, I love it for what it is. Versailles? Again, period drama, so I love it. This show feels so claustrophobic. The soundtrack of this particular TV series is also quite different. It's more modern and contemporary rather than traditional with an orchestra. I think lots of shows do this. They try to incorporate contemporary music to try and modernize it, make it connect with modern day audiences. For example, Enterprise. But even for Sai, I think it's M83. They've used a track from them. And I want to get my hands on the soundtrack. In particular, the piece of music whereby the doctor and I think the security general fall in love. I love soundtracks and they're not always available. The Vicar of Dibley, twice. I watched it with my mum when I wasn't well. That show is pure happiness. And not just for myself, when, when my mum watches it, she laughs out loud, really loudly, and I've tried to capture it on film and I, I never get it. It's just bliss. Afterlife? Now I connected to series two in that so many shows try to suggest that getting better is a one-way trip. You just get better and that's it, when in fact for many people across their lives they're continuously going like this and that's fairly normal. I mean we're not in a state of happiness 24-7, we need downtime to appreciate the happiness. But in regards to the show, I was sort of frustrated by the fact that that's the angle they went for but it was also fairly realistic. It ended in a way that I also related to but wasn't quite prepared for and therefore it left me feeling quite down. But the first series is, again, perfect. It tackles so many things that I wish more shows did, and also with a light comedic touch. The Aeronauts. So this film gave me vertigo, and I am not somebody that is frightened of heights. The film itself was like a form of therapy. I watched it during one of my lowest weeks in lockdown. And it was a film I just watched. I wasn't doing anything else. I am someone that loves views and skies and clouds, so from that perspective, <sighs> But as I went through the film, I felt like I was breathing fresh air. When it finished, I felt like I had been somewhere. And it's one of those films I really do recommend. You may have to be quite patient, but it is a good film, in its own way. I feel like I'm going into too much depth, let's try and be a bit briefer with some of these. The Fellowship of the Ring. I love it, you shall not pass. The Two Towers. I love it even more, it's my favorite. The Return of the King. Perfection, although the ending just keeps going on and on, and Hobbiton should have been burned to the ground. Please don't take that the wrong way. I did start The Hobbit. I stopped. The Intern with Anne Hathaway. Lovely film, but it goes on way too long. I think the opening could have been its own short film. Some of the early episodes of French and Saunders. It was on BBC, so I thought, why not? Three episodes of the documentary series called Civilizations on BBC. Staged on BBC, starring David Tennant and Martin Sheen, or is it Martin Sheen and David Tennant? Picard. Hook, with Robin Williams. Me Before You. The Interpreter. I also watched the first three series of Parks and Rec. Recreation. So many of you have recommended that to me over the years. I finally tried. It does feel like a rip-off of The Office. Amy replaces Steve. One of the many things I loved about- Ow! Ooh, that's not like me. Ah! I have actually jarred this finger. It looks fine, but it's not okay. One of the things I loved about The Office was that it was such a simplistic concept, and in a way it was kind of unique. I mean, there are comparisons within the thick of it, and of course there's the original. But as for Parks and Rec, I haven't finished it yet. I probably will put it on in the background, but it didn't quite hit the same spot. So many documentaries 
by Lucy Worsley. I've lost track. When she goes through the Georgians, the six wives of Henry the Ville, I say Ville, the opera, the evening song, evening tide. That's one of my favorites, I think. The, the, Regents, the Regency. That one opened my eyes to that period of time, especially when she talks about art. I love Lucy, I respect and admire her. I am the daughter of a head of history and my love of history is in my blood, but she feels fairly unique in her methods of presenting and conveying history. She feels starkly different to lots of male presenters that I grew up watching. It's lovely to see a woman tackling history. She is not the first or only female presenter in the world of historical documentaries, but she's definitely made the biggest impression on me. And that's saying something because I have watched hundreds since my childhood. A drama on Netflix called The People vs. O.J. Simpson. It was interesting, especially the subject of celebrity status and race and ethnicity. It is a courtroom drama, and I do tend to struggle with dramas that are heavily focused in courtrooms. I'm a very visual person, so being confined to a courtroom-esque situation, I struggle to follow. Anna Karenina from 2012. Now this film I have known about and I've wanted to watch because it's a period drama. But it was only this week I finally got my hands on it. Thank you, Netflix. It's a period drama, of course. So there's many things I love automatically, but the big difference between this and other things that I have been watching during this period is that the majority of this film was filmed within a old working theatre. It was a bit like theatre and magic tricks when they transferred from one scene to another, transitioned. And I wasn't aware of that prior watching this. I mean, I'd read the trivia on IMBD, but I hadn't seen it for myself. So when it first happened, I was just like, at the time I was painting and I put down my painting to watch and I watched the entire film whilst tearing my hair but I was focused on the screen the entire time and I'm glad I did that. As for the story itself, interesting subject but it was more the execution of that storytelling that I thought was brilliant. Just like heaven. It was okay, I put it on when I was doing the washing up. Very noughties. Poldark, the first three seasons. I'm currently on series four. Poldark series one to four, mwah. But series five, don't bother. I have yet to read the Poldark series. I mean, now that it's all over, perhaps I will. But the first four series are brilliantly executed. The music's fantastic. The locations are perfect. The costume design. <gasps> series five maintains the same standards, but in terms of the storytelling, it goes off on one. And I don't like that series. Don't watch it. It's frustrating because there are so many books within the Poldark universe and like any TV series, everything has to come to an end at some point, sometimes before it's time and therefore everything is sort of rushed or summed up when it's not ready to be. I think that happened there. But the first few series, yes. Thank you for making me happy in my down days. Just give me a man like that, please. I mean, obviously he goes through character progression, but especially when we first meet him, I can dream. The 90s Thomas Crown Affair. I appreciate this film far more now than I did when I was a kid. It's so good, so good. The King's Speech. Your methods are unorthodox and controversial. Your methods are unorthodox and controversial. Not controversial, controversial. I do repeat myself, I know, I know. You've got mail. It felt entirely predictable from start to finish. Despite it not feeling so uplifting as you go through, overall, it is an uplifting movie. And I must have watched more stuff, but this is everything that I have written down. In one way, I feel like I've been productive, and in the other, not so much. I haven't just been sat on the sofa watching stuff. But even if I had been, it was my lockdown. It would have been okay. So thank you for watching this. Hopefully there's some things there that you may not have heard of that you now have and will go and watch yourself. I will see you soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Ta-da!